All right, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great. All right, um, well, uh, I thought we would talk for a few minutes while we're waiting for uh, other people to arrive, although I think uh, everybody did a very good job getting here on time. That was terrific. Uh, so, uh, welcome everybody. To, uh, and uh, I have a few items to, to address in terms of uh, uh, setting the stage for all of this. Uh, first of all, to uh, many, many thanks to a lot of people. Uh, first of all, to the musicians. Um, we counted up last night, and in terms of uh, the experience of the musicians playing for Orpheus, uh, we accumulated um, a total number of 237 years that people have been playing. And I especially want to thank uh, John Morris, who uh, got more than he bargained for in terms of agreeing to assemble the the ensemble for Isaiah. Um, many thanks to our donors, uh, some of whom are, are listed in the program, but we didn't quite capture everybody. Um, so uh, uh, anybody who's not listed, thank you as well. Um, uh, thanks to Stephen Wilson and the staff of President Philharmonic who helped with our advertising. And we'll talk about that a little later. And uh, thanks to the President of State staff and uh, Dr. Garling, who helped coordinate this on this end. Um, and then uh, to uh, Jack's family, uh, and Christina, who uh, is still trapped in Brazil, um, and uh, Jack's daughter, Lydia, um, the two of them have very much helped with the organization of the program, and uh, Christina was able to uh, pry loose uh, some of Jack's manuscripts for, for this occasion. Um, I wanted to also dedicate uh, part of this, although this uh, memorial centers on um, Jack and his work, um, uh, but also uh, two people who have been important, especially to Orpheus over the years. Uh, one is Brad Huft, who was the executive director of Orpheus for many years, and when we started doing house concerts, was also the chief chef as well. Uh, and uh, also to uh, uh, Tom Callahan, who was a long-time board member, who, um, died a bit before Jack. Um, so I wanted to say something about our um, um, collaboration with the President Philharmonic uh, Proxima series. Um, one of the things that I thought um, was that instead of so much the Orpheus Ensemble presenting things that we would uh, very much like to coordinate with um, the uh, President Philharmonic and their presentation of uh, uh, chamber music and then incorporate contemporary chamber music. Um, uh, we had actually started to collaborate on the first concert um, and then we suffered from uh, COVID has interrupt us. But presumably when things come back together more, we will uh, proceed with that um, and hopefully present both contemporary and uh, more ancient uh, chamber works. Um, in terms of other uh, future directions of Orpheus, um, I put a, a sheet out where the donation box is uh, for suggestions that people might have uh, or directions that we might go. Um, and uh, also there's a sheet for 
emails. Anybody that didn't get my email this morning about parking, uh, put your name on the list so that uh, the next time they have some uh, major change in things, you'll know. Um, um, donations can be made either directly to Orpheus or to the um, uh, Fresno Philharmonic Proxima series, uh, whichever is shorter. Uh, and uh, there's a box outside uh, for checks out there. Um, after uh, the concert, there will be a reception. Uh, so one advantage of where the parking is is that you're closer to the reception. Uh, because if you just go from the, the parking lot on the east side, uh, head north, east, north, and east, you arrive at uh, Campus Point in front of the, the cinema, and the reception site, Que Pasa, is there in the southeast corner. Um, so I've probably forgotten a few things. But uh, anyway, welcome again. And I'm going to, to introduce Dr. Ken, Kenneth Frelich, who will uh, provide a musical perspective, um, historical perspective on Jack. Good afternoon. Everyone can hear me all right? Yes. Awesome. That's great. So, I think many of you know who I am. Just introduced as Ken Fellow, but I know that there are several in the room who have only seen me over Zoom. I think I'm particularly thinking of my students. So, it's uh, really nice to actually be here in person. I think this is the first time I've been in Wahlberg Hall in person in about a year and a half. So, it's been a nice homecoming to be able to come back here. So my name is, as mentioned, Dr. Froelich. I run the composition area here at Fresno State. And uh, I want to say a few words, both about uh, Jack's music, about his place in Fresno, and a little bit of a personal mention as well. Um, as uh, many of you know, Jack was my predecessor in this position here at Fresno State. And it's been you know, an honor to be able to follow up on that position. There are many things that I could say about his career. But a lot of this was actually already covered in uh, Donald Monroe's retrospective from uh, July 2020, and it was an absolutely wonderful article that talks about Jack's life, Jack's time here in Fresno, his career, and a lot of what I can talk about that is covered in that article. He joined uh, the Fresno State faculty in 1970, and uh, he had an immediate impact here in the Fresno music scene. One of the things he did at that time was also direct the Merced Symphony Orchestra from 1971 to 1977, which incidentally was the year I was born. So it puts a lot of perspective here. Um, but then in 1978, he founded Orpheus. And this has become the kind of pinnacle of contemporary and early music, eclectic music here in the Fresno community. Jack served as the artistic director of Orpheus for over 40 years, and that includes also his time where he spent both here in Fresno and in Brazil, flying back and forth and continuing these concerts. And anyone who runs a new music series or any sort of concert series knows just how much work goes into organizing these concerts. So it's remarkable what he was doing to continue this all of those many years. He taught numerous students in music composition and music theory at Fresno State, many of whom are probably here in this audience. I remember speaking with one of his students, John Hoard, just a few months ago at another concert that I attended and had a chance to talk a little bit, um, thinking about Jack's impact, not just when he was here, but then, you know, it's kind of like all the many uh, people that followed who continue his legacy here within the community of Fresno. Of course, Jack was also the chair of our music department here from 1990 until when he retired in 2003. He oversaw the uh, construction of what we still refer to as the new music building, even though it is 30 years old now. So, but that uh, is part of you know, his legacy as well. And uh, he had such, such a strong impact here within our department. 
So I actually didn't meet Jack until my second semester here at Fresno State. I started here in 2005, and that was already when Jack was splitting his time between Brazil and Fresno. So when I finally met him, I actually heard so much more about Jack from all my colleagues, hearing about his time as department chair to the numerous composition awards that he won. Probably the most prestigious of those was the Rome Prize. It's one of the top awards in music composition. Hearing about his time as a hockey player and uh, showing up to class with broken teeth. So needless to say, all of this created this larger than life image in my head of who Jack Fortner was. And so by the time I actually did meet him in the spring of 2006, I was a nervous babbling mess. And that's saying a lot because those of you who know me will know I'm already a nervous babbling mess. <laughs> and so, and so I, I met him and I'm just kind of nervous and shaking and this amused Jack to no end, as you can imagine. And of course, you know, it endeared to meet him, me to him a little bit. And I think as a result, we did become friends and colleagues over these years. Jack talked shop a lot and loved to talk shop with me. In fact, whenever he would come back to Fresno, one of the first things he would do is he would send me an email with his most recent composition attached and say, hey, I want you to check out what I've recently done. And at the same time, he would ask me, what are you working on? I want to see what you've been working on. It's kind of like two composition students sharing their work as if you know, we work together and always getting back feedback whether or not we actually ask of it. You know, just get this feed, you know, kind of back and forth. It was wonderful. I, I really did treasure these moments. For as a new professor, there weren't that many opportunities for me to get honest feedback on my music. And Jack would give this to me because he was always a teacher. That was something that never left him. And I could see that side of him in these moments when he would take a look at my recent score and give me his feedback, talk about what I'm doing, and this would really be very valuable time. Jack's music is some of the most well-crafted music that I've ever seen. Every element of his music is meticulous and intentional. Many people will say his music is avant-garde, but Jack actually was not a fan of labels. He, he would frequently, you know, not want to be labeled one way or the other. And many times, you know, when he's composing music, you can see that there are elements of experimental music that he's working on, but then there are also times where he's borrowing from his background as a jazz musician. And then there's also many times where he's working off of more traditional applications. And so he's bringing all of this together into a really complete musician and complete composer that you see in the score. Bottom line, though, is that regardless of where it's coming from, his focus on craft, his focus on structure, that was always at the forefront of everything that he was doing. Also, many musicians know Jack's music is quite challenging. Another thing we both have in common. <laughs> One of my fondest memories of Jack, though, is a conversation that we had over the copy machine in the Department of Music office break room, where many great conversations, of course, have been had. We were discussing a common issue among composers, which is, you know, hearing that our music is difficult. So, as a friendly word of advice, Jack turned to me and said, you know, every time a performer tells me that my music is hard to play, I simply tell them, yeah, it was also hard to write. <laughs> I will miss that one of Jack's, and I will miss his delightful insights to my music, his music, and I will miss his leadership in Orpheus, his boundless imagination, and mostly his immense love of music. Today, Orpheus, today's Orpheus program really isn't the last hurrah, but it's a moment for all of us to remember Jack in his best place here in the hall, on the stage, in concert. Thank you. Enjoy the program.
Lydia Fortner. I'm Jack's daughter. How are you all doing? I'm really glad that you could all be here tonight. I really wish we could have had this concert last year when it was originally scheduled and my dad could have been here for it. Um, but I'm so glad that everybody was able to reconvene and have this final concert. Um, up until the day, I kind of really felt like he was going to still fly in from Brazil and be here for the concert. But that's not happening, is it? <laughs> but the show must go on. That's how I was raised, and that's what we're doing, right? The show, the creation, the art, the making, that's how I was raised, that that is the most important thing. That's what makes us human. That's what makes us more than mammals, right? And so that was the most important thing that my dad taught me. The show must go on, create, do, be human. He was incredibly creative. He was the best daddy to hang out with because he was a lot of fun. You know about him because of music, but he did a lot of art things. He built me a playhouse with a gumdrop roof when I was five. He sewed my figure skating costume when I was six. That's how I learned how to sew. <laughs> he built a traditional full-size Japanese tea house in our backyard. It took him a few years. Um, completely traditional hand-carved mortise and tenon joints because it had to be authentic. All that sort of thing. Um, he taught me how to edit reel-to-reel -reel tape in the electronic studio just down the hall there when I was about 10 with a razor blade and some tape. So, yeah. And how to make a tape loop. You actually looped it around a music rack. That's how that worked. Orpheus started when I was 14, and it's been a part of my life, most of my life. I helped with the uh, first mailer, because email wasn't the thing then, so I stuffed envelopes with them when I was 14. So, um, so I think that keeping the creativity going, whether it's Orpheus in its current form, Orpheus in what happens next, um, I would like you to all remember to be human, create, make art, sing, dance, sew something, paint something, put on some music, dance in your kitchen where you're supposed to be doing the dishes. That's how I do it. <laughs> but also, when you do something, think of my dad. Because the show must go on, even if he's not here. So we're going to hear his final piece, Isaiah, finally getting to be premiered. So thank you for being here.
Thank you. 